Today we're here with the 750 with the new Rotax 912 IS fuel injection engine. We're going to take it up and uh, just do a short takeoff, do a little demo flight, and uh, talk about the new 750 with the Rotax engine, IS engine. I got the master on. I have my radio already turned on. It has a lane A and a lane B, kind of like your mag switch left and right. I got my engine monitor system. Before I start, I want to make sure my uh, throttle is set at 25% for cold start. I got it set at 25%. Now I turn on my main fuel pump. Okay. Check I got fuel pressure. And I'll turn on the start button. And I have oil pressure there. The new Rotex 912 IS fuel injection engine is a lot smoother than the traditional 912 S engine with the carbureted engine. It's a lot easier to start, smoother starting. Okay, we're going to start taxiing out to the runway. We're just going to show you uh, the proper technique on uh, a short takeoff and a nice gentle climb and then a few turns, come back around and uh, do a, a nice short landing. I went up to BC and did the first flight uh, back in November with this new 912 IS engine. I flew for about seven hours and it was flawless. Uh, we did not have one squawk and it uh, just flew beautifully. I've got uh, two alternators, two ignitions, a main fuel pump, a, a backup fuel pump, uh, and I know there's backup sensors on there. So everything is redundant. Okay, we have a little bit of wind here, not too, no, probably 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. Rotax, it takes a little bit longer to warm up before you're allowed to take off. You want your oil temperature and your water temperature to get, get up to the, to the, at least the green line. They flew it down here from Canada just the other day and it was about a 1500 mile trip and their average burn was about uh, 3.8 to 4 gallons an hour, which is, that's awesome, it's just, uh, it's unheard of. And the average speed, I think it was about 95 miles an hour. And you just can't beat that, you know, burning 4 gallons an hour. And I do have a display here that tells me my uh, fuel burn. And I'll mention that when we, once we get up in the air, what our fuel burn is and then what percentage of power I'm using. Okay, we're going to run it up. We're going to run it up to 4,000. And we're going to check each ignition, lane A and lane B. We're going to turn off lane A. The light should come on for lane A. And our B circuit is actually working. Turn the A back on, and we're going to go turn the B off and check that. Okay, B's off, A's on. Okay, we're going to turn our B back on, get both ignitions, A for active and the B for standby. temperatures start to, starting to go up into the green. Water temperature is fine. Our main fuel's on. 
We're going to turn it on our auxiliary fuel pump. That's just for takeoff and landing. Check our doors, locks are secure. Controls clear and free. I'm going to lower the flaps just a little bit for a short takeoff. And set our trim. Setting up for a short takeoff, I like to have about half flaps, and I'll have the stick all the way back like I'm doing a soft field takeoff. The nose will come up almost immediately, and then I lower the nose just a little bit, and then she'll fly right on off. So you're actually not riding on the nose wheel more than just a few feet. So everybody's wondering, you know, why do you want a tricycle instead of a tail drag? Well, it's it's you don't need a tail dragger in this configuration because your nose is not actually uh, on the ground very long. So I'm going to ease in the power. Brakes are on. Sticks back. Nose comes up instant. I bet I didn't roll three feet. It's a little choppy today. It's a nice, stable, smooth engine, though. Excellent visibility. I can see right in front of me on both sides. I've got the, the cutaway on the wing, so when I start on my turns, I can actually see over the wing. We're going to actually do a gradual turn. I like resting my arm on my, on my leg and then just rotating my, my uh, wrist for the controls. Makes it nice and relaxing. And I, don't, I won't uh, over control it if it's a bumpy situation because uh, my leg is actually supporting the stick. Back to the traffic, the is going to be turning left down for runway uh, 1-8 Mexico. Been a while since I've used 1-8 just because uh, the winter you just typically don't use a south runway. And we'll bring up the flaps. We've got it on downwind now. And we'll use full flaps probably for landing. Trimming the nose down a little bit. Right now we're about 90% power. 87% and we're burning 3.7 gallons an hour. Alright, ease back the stick a little bit to slow the airspeed down a little bit so we can uh, actually deploy a little bit of flaps. Deploy a little bit of flaps. Trim adjustment. Mexico traffic boom, we're returning base to final 418 Mexico. Landing, I like to use full flaps, come in a little bit steeper approach, and then just develop a little higher sink rate than you would typically with a normal airplane, and then control that sink rate with power. Now you can typically you can do a normal landing, but you're going to come in lower, and you're going to use up a little bit more runway by doing that approach. Today, with a little bit of wind, 10 to 15 mile an hour wind down the runway, I, do, I will have to keep a little bit of power in. Grabbing a little bit, the wind's off the, my left a little bit, about 30 degrees. And the Rotax just sounds so nice, very smooth.
the setup, keep the nose up, chop the power, and stick all the way back. And we probably rolled, you know, 100 feet. I wasn't trying to uh, land the shortest that I could. Just a nice, safe landing. And once you touch down, you can actually add just a little bit of power and keep the stick back and keep that nose off the runway if you're going into a riverbed or, or something like that, to rough terrain.